Hello Fragrance family, welcome back to Real Scent Review. Thanks for tuning in this evening. If you are not subscribed to the channel yet, please subscribe, please give the video a like, please touch the bell so you can receive notifications to your phone, tablet, or computer. It's been a while, ladies and gentlemen, so thank you again for tuning in. Um, somebody asked me today, Joe, what's the difference between niche and design? So, to put it very simply, because there are numerous differences, but to put it simply, a uh, designer house focuses not only on fragrances, but other offerings. So for example, Chanel, designer brand, very well known. They release fragrances, but they also release makeup, they release handbags, they release, you know, articles of clothing. So fragrances are not their only focus. A niche fragrance house, on the other hand, focuses only on fragrances. So for example, Parfum de Mali is a niche brand. They focus only on fragrances. Uh, a couple of other differences, one other big difference, to be honest, is niche houses tend to use mm, different types of notes, uh, strange notes that aren't very common, less mass appealing, more specialized, more for elitist type people who, who are who are more so into wearing fragrances to be able to, to research them and decipher individual notes as opposed to just looking for compliments because a lot of niche offerings are very abstract, they can be polarizing and not necessarily mass pleasing all of the time. Whereas, you know, uh, designer fragrances are, they're, they're designed to make you smell good in a way that everybody around you, well, most people around you are going to like, you know. So, those are some differences. Uh, also, niche tends to be more expensive. They tend to use higher quality notes. But um, the vast, vast majority of fragrance owners, of fragrance lovers are purely into designer. Um, you know, designers are just much more popular. They're mo much more easily accessible to the general population. They're much less expensive in a lot of cases than, than most niche offerings. So that leads me to my next thought here. Uh, in the designer world, the vast majority of fragrances, I'm going to say probably around 85, 90% of fragrances fall into one of two categories, sometimes mixed. But there are two main categories in you know, the designer fragrance realm. Sweet and fresh. So what is in between sweet and fresh? Well, to be honest, there are a couple of things, but one that, you know, popped right into my mind when I asked myself this question was leather. Leather can sometimes lend itself to sweeter gourmand scents, but when it's, when, when leather is the main focus of, of, of a scent, it tends to give something that's not quite fresh and not quite sweet. And I think a perfect example of this would be Tom Ford's Ombre Leather Eau de Parfum. This is the 2018 version, by the way. A little bit of history about this Tom Ford Ombre Leather 2018. So Tom Ford came out with an immensely popular fragrance back in, I think, 2007. It was called Tuscan Leather. Now, very good performance. Tuscan leather was well known. The only thing is a lot of people complained that it was a little bit too rough, like too heavy. The, le the, the, the fragrance was too in your face. It was just too powerful and strong and it turned, you know, a good amount of people off. Um, it also had a, a raspberry note on top of that to, to lend it to some, some sweetness. Now, as an answer to Tuscan leather's, mm, you know, issues, let's say, a few years later, well, in 2016, Tom Ford released Ombre Leather, the 2016 version. And now that was meant to be sort of a, like I said, an answer to Tuscan Leather. So it removed the raspberry note, but it was still, it was still quite rough, still very strong in, in certain ways. Anyway, that leads us to 2018 when they came out with Tom Ford Ombre Leather 2018 version, which is this, which is a toned down, very rounded out, and in my opinion, much better offering than both Tuscan Leather and Ombre Leather 2016. Now, of course, everybody has a, people will have different opinions and that's totally fine. Look, this, the world we're in, the fragrance world is, it's all subjective. If you like it, wear it. It's really that simple. I'm just here to give my opinion and give my, my views on, on, you know, the products that I have, the products that I enjoy. And I hope to teach a thing or two. That's it. It doesn't have to be any more complicated. Having said that, I still think that this is the best uh, offering of the Tom Ford leather, ombre leather slash Tuscan leather line. So anyway, to the actual review, without any further ado now, I'm gonna waste a spray here. Great atomization. Oh yeah, beautiful scent. Right off the top, I'm getting some cardamom. Now in the fragrance world, really two types of cardamom are used, green cardamom, black cardamom. 
Um, there are like 25 different plants called cardamom out there. To put it really simply, for the purposes of this video, I'm gonna just differentiate between two kinds, which like I said, green and black. Green cardamom is the seed, the cardamom seed that has the shell covering it, and it is picked when the plant is still very young. Black cardamom, the 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 the, the skin, the, the covering has fallen off, and it uh, it's very ripened, it's a very mature. So the green cardamom gives a very intense, almost, in a way, a slightly spiciness. Um, it reminds of cloves, so cloves, maybe a little bit of nutmeg. So it's kind of like a black pepper, an intense black pepper with a touch of sweetness underneath and spice. So it's like a really spicy and a touch of honey type of sweetness, but mostly spicy. That's what I get right up top. A few seconds later, that rugged leather comes in, but it's very rounded. It's not so in your face, although it is there. It's, it, it's definitely, you can tell that there's leather here, but it's not off-putting. It's not skanky. It's not uh, too overpowering. You know, like this is the type of scent where if people smell this in the street, they're going to really enjoy it. That this is not a super polarizing scent. So right off, we've got the spicy cardamom with a touch of sweetness. This leather, very prominent leather. It's, 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 it's like a dusty type of leather. It's really nice. It's not a sweet leather, but at the same time, it's not really a smoky leather, at least not in the opening here. And then in the background, there's a little bit of jasminum sambac, which is a type of flower that's used a lot to, uh, to flavor tea. It gives an aroma to different teas. So you get a slight, a very slight tea note in there as well. And of course, in the further dry down, you get some oak moss and some patchouli. Now, oak moss, for those of you unfamiliar, have you ever pulled bark off of a tree? That's pretty similar to what moss smells like. It can be um, very fresh, a very fresh type of woodiness. And some people say there's a little slight bit of inkiness in, in, in moss. So like pen ink, for example, a very slight touch. I don't get that in this, um, in this iteration of moss. I definitely don't. Now, if you want to talk about uh, ink, inky, sort of mossy, resinous scents, Ancre Noir is, uh, is one that definitely fits that bill, but that's, that's for another review at another time. Anyway, and finally, there's some patchouli here to give it a nice grassy sort of, grassy sort of woody, slight spiciness here earthiness. It's more of an earthiness than a spice. So, you know, this um, amazing fragrance here. Uh, as far as designers go, Tom Ford is, is very close to the top in terms of quality and performance and uniqueness of designer sense. Tom Ford is, is definitely one of the best designer fragrance brands out there. Um, this, of course, being one of their most popular offerings for very good reason. Um, I'm not going to waste an extreme amount of time talking about this, but this is, um, is it slightly linear? Eh, maybe, you know, the notes that I mentioned here so far, so definitely the cardamom and the leather being the most prominent, followed by a little tiny bit of jasminum sambac with the tea note, like I said, and in the dry down the moss and patchouli, you know, all the way through this, this scent doesn't change a whole lot. Um, the only difference is being... The cardamom kind of dies down. The cardamom and the jasmine definitely die down toward the mid-life of the scent and towards the, the late dry down. The moss and patchouli really come out. Gives it an almost borderline, borderline smokiness mixed with the leather. The leather is constant. The leather is there the whole way through. But with those very slight differences that I just mentioned here. Um, but all in all, this isn't a scent where you spray it on and the opening smells completely different to the dry down. It's not one of those scents. Having said that, um, this is definitely one of my favorite uh, additions to my collection. It's very nice. Um, I want to talk about the performance a little bit here. Sometimes Tom Ford fragrances get a little bit of hate for, you know, a little bit of questionable performance. This scent here lasts so long. I sprayed one spray on my wrist yesterday morning. It's now midnight. So yesterday morning, so like 26 hours ago, one spray on my wrist. I went to the gym twice. I went for a run. I showered three different times and I could still smell this on my wrist. 
as a skin set, don't scent, don't get me wrong, like it wasn't projecting anymore, but you know, I, I could still smell it on my wrist. Uh, so this, the I'm gonna give it longevity, this is insane longevity. Um, projection, for the first hour and a half, definitely more than arm's length, it projects. After that, it starts to get a little bit closer to the body. The sillage is, is about average, you know, it doesn't really stick around in the air that much, even though it's an eau de parfum concentration. Um, the longevity, like I said, is really where this one is going to shine. And for the first couple of hours, the, uh, the projection as well. So in terms of when I would wear this, <laughs> this is, uh, yeah, this is it's a, a rugged classiness, I would say. I, I wouldn't wear this to a club. I would wear this more of a night out to a bar, uh, a situation where you're not going to be totally crowded in by a bunch of people. Uh, dinner, you know, a meeting, for example. Uh, an outdoor event that leans more to the formal side of things, a date, you know, of course, a date. This is a very, very sexy, kind of badass type of scent here. Um, would not wear it to a club just because it's, it's uh, the quality of it is too good, honestly. Uh, I don't want a good quality scent to be mixed with hundreds of other scents and sweaty people moving around and stuff. That kind of just defeats the purpose of wearing a quality scent like this, in my opinion. Um, definitely leans cold weather, uh, fall, winter. Um, I would avoid wearing this in the heat. It could become very heavy uh, because of the leather, you know, and the cardamom, which is spicy. In spring, it would fit very well in spring. I would just avoid wearing this in the heat altogether, honestly. Any other temperature, any other type of weather would be perfect, though. Um, this leans mature. This is not for young people. Um, I would say age 25 plus, maybe even maybe even getting a little bit close to age 30 plus. Um, it's, it's, this is a scent that knows what it wants. It has a message and it, it gets that message across. You know, it doesn't pull any punches. This is a, it's a classy, rugged, in a classy type of way scent um, that, that I just don't feel is appropriate for, for younger age groups. Uh, this is, this is something you wear when you're, Formal casual, you know, semi semi formal type of dress, I would say. Um, and having said that, a lot of websites, a lot of reviews list this as a unisex fragrance. I wholeheartedly disagree. I this spews masculinity, in my opinion. Maybe it's because I'm not a fragrance expert, but I there is just nothing whatsoever about this scent that that makes me think feminine. This is. To me, this is purely masculine, but you know, everybody has their opinion and that's totally fine. I'm just, I'm explaining what my opinion is. Price point, this one being a Tom Ford offering can be very expensive. Um, I'll give you a, a, a professional tip though. Sephora, the fragrance store, has a website where you can order a, a cologne sample pack that has, uh, I think, seven or eight different tiny samples of colognes. And uh, so you can sample them, you order this, and the one that you like, you can let Sephora know which one you like, and they'll send you a 50 milliliter bottle of that scent at no extra cost. So you only pay the original $72 for the sample pack, which is great because this retails 50 milliliters for around $120 US, sometimes even a little bit more. So that Sephora trick is a nice, nice little tip for you guys. I know that that's, that exists in the United States. I don't know if it exists in Canada or Europe, where I am. Um, I, for one, got this 50 milliliter for about $80 American here in Spain. Uh, a national perfumery had a, a, a clearance sale on their website. Actually, it was more of a, a back-to-school season type of sale. Uh, heavy, heavy discounts. I just had to pick this one up. It was a great buy. I'm so glad I did it. Um, I'm gonna give this a solid nine out of 10. Compliments galore. This is a grown up, bold fragrance. That It's a totally out of the realm of blue freshies and sweet gourmands. This is something really different. And if you're not familiar with leather, if you wanna make that jump and have your first leather addition to your collection, I think there is absolutely no better choice than Tom Ford Ombre Leather Eau de Parfum 2018. Thanks guys, that's gonna do it for tonight. Take care.